Hi guys, this is Corey with SellerCore.com, the free auction template editor. Today I want to talk about the SellerCore toolbar, and when I say toolbar, I'm talking about the blue section right here, the drop-down boxes, the center, the bolds, and touch on those and talk about how to be more efficient and get templates put together a little faster for you. So before I go into my example, I'm going to click on this text right here, and you're going to see a few things happen up top. It tells us that it's 135 pixels, it's the color lime, it's centered, it's bold, and it's inside of a div. You'll see the div block. On the outside so if I click here you'll see it changes this is 44 pixels it's blue it's centered it's inside of a span and a div you'll see the span block right there and the outer div block goes around so to get started so go to our our template I'll split screen this so we can see the HTML you'll see that there is no code on the text it's just standard text it's default text the only HTML here is the BRs those are line breaks it basically just push the down a line it does nothing to affect the text other than drops it down a line. So click back up here. You'll see we have paragraph, font family, save CSS. This would be font size, font color, and background. This would be the background of our font or the background of the block. And of course we have justify left, center, right, bold, italic, underline, very standardized stuff over there. So to talk first, I want to talk about this paragraph. When you use paragraph, this is um, HTML code. This is definitely older code. But you'll see it, you know, for search engines, they still look for these a lot. So people use them on right web page. Generally, when making headers, I use a div and create it myself. If I click heading one, it's standardized HTML. It's going to make it the same size all the time unless I put CSS on it. And there's really no reason to do that. Like I said, once again, I just create a div and make it exactly what I want. If I change this to heading two, it makes it a little bit smaller. So there is an option to use those if you want. I, like I said, I do it my own way. So I back out of these, go back to standard text down here, you'll see, and let's get started. So first thing is that in order for this text to be colored or have a background color or size, it needs some sort of element around it so the element can tell the code, the text what color to be. So when I highlight this, when we go over color, I hit color drop down, you'll see standardized colors. These all have names to them. We'll click red. You see that our text is now red. But you'll also see down here that it created a span around it and added a style color with the hexmal decimal red to the text. So if I click in a box, you'll see the little box around it. That's telling us that it's inside of an element, and that element is has red text. So since we're clicked inside of this box, I can click background and I can make the background color we'll do aqua. So now it's red text with an aqua background. You can see that it added a background hexmal decimal down here. And when I click back in this box, you see that the toolbar highlighted two things for us. It highlighted a color and a background and it's telling us that it's red color and aqua background. So going down to the next one, go a little further. I'm going to highlight this and I'm going to start by creating a size. So put a size there. Click back in a box and instead of doing a pre-selected color, I'm going to open our color palette. I'm going to pick a fuchsia-like color, something maybe purplish right there. Go OK. And for background, I'm going to do the same thing. I'll pick a green color right there. So there we go. So now what happens is when I'm clicked in this element, it tells us our hexadecimals for the two colors, but it also highlights these to tell me that these are palette colors. So if I click back in here, there's that fuchsia color in the green background. I can scroll over these, see them. But if I click on this box, what it does, it puts it down here. This is a preview box. So I want to get it a little bit brighter. I can go like that. Hopefully you guys can see that's a little brighter. Click OK. And now it's a little brighter up there. And of course I could do the same thing for background. What happens is that every time I select a hexadecimal color, you'll see that it creates it and throws it in a recent for me. And it'll save the last five recent colors I've clicked on. So here I've only have two. But this will also work for background color and size. So you'll see that 135 that I clicked on on the welcome screen. That's down here because it's a size that's not in the default. So it saves us for us if we want to use it. So how we would use that is we'll go back to here. Click on that. That fuchsia color we decided that's a good color we like. Click there. And there it is. That simple. So this way I can keep the same theme across a bunch of documents really fast. I don't have to go back and find that hexadecimal color. I can just click, go to document, click again, and it's done. So, so uh, you've noticed so far that if I just click in the box and select something like Comic Sans, it the whole box, the whole element's affected. 
Well, we also have the option here of, of course, highlighting text, going in here and then selecting another color. So there we go. Go back in there and make this a yellow. Oh, wrong box. Back out. Had a wrong box selected. There we go. Yellow. And there we go. So I can highlight text and create, you know, just that text block. Or if I'm just inside of an element and I and I click, it'll, it'll affect that whole element for me. So moving one step further, I am going to highlight this and I'm gonna create a div. I'm actually just gonna insert div around it. I can of course go in and create a div if I know I want to style it. Insert a div around it. There's our div block. Of course, by default, it goes all the way across the screen. So now I'm gonna double click in here. I'm gonna edit the CSS style. And I'm gonna go through and we're gonna make this, we'll make this 55 pixels. 55 pixels, we'll font weight at the bold. We'll set some color here. Let's do some sort of blue. And we'll do a background color. Background color, we'll do a some sort of, I don't know, some sort of red. All right, so we'll click OK with that. And now what happens when I click in here, once again, you'll see my 55 pixels I set, my blue, my red, and that is bold. So that way, if you go in that way, and of course I can change this if I wanted this to be 44 pixels, drops it down to 44 pixels to me. Or if I decide that red's too bright, whatever, you know, I can change it to something else. So, and the last thing I want to talk about is, oh, well, I'll touch on this real quick. Of course, we have our, if I click in there, our centered, our justify right, justify left, centered, I can turn it off just by clicking it again. And, you know, italic, underline, turn those all on or off. And of course, I could highlight just the section I want, just the section I want, if I want just that to be underlined. So, you know, and of course, that creates a different span element for us. You've seen that before, just like any standard word processor. And finally, last but not least, I'm gonna talk about our save CSS. So if I click in this block here, double click on it, I can save the CSS. You've seen this in other videos. We'll save this CSS. And what happens now is it knows that we have saved CSS, but it just titles them one and two. This way, if I click in a box, it tells me, hey, this is saved, this is already saved, it's saved one. This one's already saved, it's saved two. And of course, just like the other thing, I could go here, click this save CSS, go back over here, click in a box, that was three, there we go. So that immediately saves all that CSS and it throws it over into that element for us. So that's how you use the toolbar, guys. Definitely get used to it way faster putting templates together. This is Corey with SellerCore.com, the free auction template editor. Please leave any questions or comments below. Thank you.